This lecture will be our final lecture in the series. It covers 1988 to 2003, George H.W. Bush's presidency, Bill Clinton's presidency, and the beginning of George W. Bush's presidency. We'll start with the election of 1988. Remember, we were coming off of Reagan's eight years as president, where he was insanely popular. Democrats are going to nominate Michael Dukakis, who was relatively uninspiring, uninspiring and couldn't come up against Reagan's success. Republicans nominated Reagan's vice president, George H.W. Bush. When he was running for president in one of his campaign speeches, he said, read my lips, no new taxes. Reagan had a lot of tax cuts. He was very, very popular. But unfortunately, during the first, during Bush's administration, there's going to be a recession that will start in late 1988, early 1989. So Bush will win the election on the promise of no new taxes, but unfortunately due to a recession, he will have to increase those. One of the biggest things you need to know about H.W. Bush's presidency is the Persian Gulf War. In August 2, 1990, Iraq ev invaded Kuwait, claiming that part of the country actually belonged to Iraq. Then they turned towards Saudi Arabia. If they got Saudi Arabia, they would control over half of the world's oil supply. If you remember during Ford and Carter's administration, the lack of oil to the United States was a huge issue. Led to a recession, um, a whole, whole oil crisis, you know, where gas stations, there were horrible lines, people couldn't get enough oil to heat their homes. So we were very, very concerned about a lack of oil control. So January 1991, we will help liberate Kuwait from Iraq. This will be a coalition operation. We'll be doing it with the British, the French, the Saudis, the Egyptians, and ourselves. So similar to the Korean War, which were NATO forces, this isn't necessarily a NATO action, but it is a UN-sanctioned um, coalition troops that will go into here. Um, within a month, Bush will announce a ceasefire. The war will be over with less than 400 casualties on the U.S. side. Iraqis suffered from over 100,000 military and civilian deaths, and the number of deaths from disease due to the embargo that followed the war. These were some of the sanctions that we considered. In 1992, Republicans will continue with George H.W. Bush. As I said in the 1988 slide, he had to create a economic package that had a significant tax increase in it, which went against him, what he promised. And so the Democrats especially ran these very skillful ads where they would have just that clip, read my lips, no new taxes. And then they'd have this, he promised you no new taxes and you're paying new taxes. And so the American people are like, ah, he's not upholding his promises. They're going to, he's going to go up, Bush is going to go up against an independent named H. Ross Perot. Perot was against the current federal budget and its deficit spending. Perot will be very successful early on, but he will run, he'll drop out of the race um, in the months leading up to the actual election because of pressure from both sides. He'll try to re-enter the race, but he'll never gain his popularity from before he dropped out. And then Democrats are going to nominate William J. Clinton, or as you probably know him, Bill Clinton. He vowed to strengthen the weak economy and move away from traditional democratic values, get people off welfare, and encourage growth in private business. And in 1992, Bill Clinton will win the election. One of the big domestic policy issues that Bill Clinton will deal with is NAFTA, the North America Free Trade Agreement. Mexico, the United States, and Canada were in a free trade zone. No tariff for goods sold between these three countries. Fear of jobs were going to Mexico were ignored, and it was passed in 1994. Trade increased significantly, which helped our economy, but that fear of jobs going to Mexico was not completely unfounded, and we did see a number of co uh, companies move their operation to Mexico where they could pay people less, and they have uh, less environmental regulations. And so, <coughs> excuse me, it will hurt American industry in some ways. The other big issue was Clinton's impeachment. Clinton was accused of sexually harassing a woman named Paula Jones. In the investigation, it was discovered that he had an affair with an intern, a woman named Monica Lewinsky. Under oath, Clinton claimed that he did not have sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky. However, 
It was later discovered that he may have lied under oath. So in 1998, Clinton was impeached, brought up on charges of perjury and obstruction of, dress, uh, obstruction of justice. Now remember, impeachment simply means to be charged with a crime. It does not mean being removed with office. And Clinton will be the second president to be impeached. The other president to be impeached was, of course, Andrew Johnson during Reconstruction. Clinton's brought up on trial before the Senate, and the Senate will fall short of the two-thirds majority needed to convict him. So in 2000, Clinton's vice president, Al Gore, will run on the success of Clinton's presidency. Clinton managed to balance his budget, have a surplus, which meant that the federal government actually brought in more money than it spent, NAFTA, as well as many other issues. Republicans will nominate George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush's son, who ran under a platform of a return to family values. After Clinton with his sex scandal, there was a lot of discussions about America losing its morality, and maybe there was a need to return to traditional values. Election night, returns were confusing, and it came down to the electoral votes from Florida. Some counties in Florida had disputed returns. Gore asked for a recount in Florida, and the Florida Supreme Court allowed it. So Bush appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court, which stopped the recount and gave the election to Bush based on an earlier count in Florida. Gore won the popular vote and Bush won the election. This is very common as we've seen. Well, okay, it's not that common, but it's not the first time it's happened, nor will it be the last. As we see demographics change, where more people are living in cities and less in rural areas, we can see people lose the electoral votes while winning the popular vote and vice versa. So it's very important to realize that the election of 2000 was a disputed election based on these returns. The big thing that George W. Bush faced during his administration was, of course, the war on terror. On September 11, 2001, our nation was attacked by a group of terrorists using airplanes. Four airplanes went down throughout the United States. Two crashed into the World Trade Centers, one crashed into the Pentagon, and another was brought down in a field in Pennsylvania. So Bush's response, or Bush was needed to, to respond to this war on terror. One of the first things he did was enact the T Patriot Act. Those suspected of terrorism would lose many civil liberties. For example, a government can detain foreigners suspected of terrorism for seven days without charging them with a crime. He also created the Department of Homeland Security. This is going to be a new cabinet position, which would coordinate national effort, efforts between other organizations to combat terrorism. In October 2001, we will invade Afghanistan, and the bombing of the country began at that time. See, 9-11 was caused by Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden, and Afghanistan was harboring them. When this slide was written, it said the network was broken up in 2002, but bin Laden remains at large. You all know, of course, that a couple of years ago, bin Laden was actually uh, executed by SEAL Team 6 during um, a raid in Pakistan. And so bin Laden has been, has been taken out of the, the equation. But we still remain in Afghanistan, um, hoping to keep that nation secure. Um, and allow, allowing insurgents to necessarily take over the country. Iraq was a completely different issue. Many Americans get confused and think that we invade Iraq because of 9-11. That's not actually the case. Saddam Hussein was accused of creating bio biological, nuclear, and chemical weapons, weapons of mass destruction. Inspections were ordered, and when Hussein refused to comply, Great Britain and the U.S. ordered him to step down. When he refused... The U.S. and Great Britain launched an attack in March 2003. No trace of weapons of mass destruction were ever found, but it was discovered later that he had used chemical weapons on his own people. He was brought up for war crimes and executed. The next series we will talk about will be modern issues, modern technology, modern plagues, uh, new immigration, things like that that have happened in the 1990s and up till present day.